In this edition of Impact, we hear the sounds of a classical orchestra for inner city kids. So many of these families have been feeling like, I don't know if the classical orchestra world is really for me or really for my community. And to see that start to change and to see these children start to take ownership and say, I'm a trombonist, it's, it's been a really incredible thing. Then, we take a trip to the Hollenbeck Youth Center, an after-school program for children. CNN put together a piece as the toughest, roughest place in the world is here in East LA. Yeah? I look at it differently. I see it as a rough place, but with kids with good hearts. But first, we visit an art class where inspiration comes from a local artist and teacher. And you can't just sit there and not do anything. You have to kind of perform for them and to inspire them and to demonstrate for them and celebrate them but, and push them and challenge them. Welcome to Impact, I'm Albert Sabaté. In this episode, we explore how sports and the arts become constructive forces in the lives of children. Our first story profiles a Los Angeles painter, muralist, and school teacher. He uses art to engage young children in the classroom. A teacher is kind of like an artist in a lot of ways, like you have to be able to create right then and there. You do have to have a, a certain level of artistry to be a, an effective teacher and you can't just like just sit there and not do anything. You have to kind of perform for them and to inspire them and to like you know, demonstrate for them and, and like celebrate them but, and push them and challenge them. That's what Jose Ramirez has been doing here for 13 years. He teaches third grade in LA's MacArthur Park neighborhood at an elementary school named Esperanza. It's the Spanish word for hope. This is a mostly Central American population and very, very poor. And it's really hard sometimes um, having to block out all of what they bring in every day and get to you the meat of your lesson. There was a morning that um, someone had either been pushed or jumped off of a building and the body was still on the sidewalk at around 6 30 in the morning seven it was covered in, with white you know the the ambulance or the coroner had covered the body up and kids walked to school and just went around it and came and there was no discussion about it there was <laughs> you know whereas in um maybe in santa monica or beverly hills you would have a crisis team and you, you know but here this is everyday these are, this is everyday things everyday things ramirez aims to overcome using what he loves art. Mr. said that you gotta make the puppets like yourself. The lesson is simple. Kids create puppets to represent themselves and act out problems and the solutions with their puppets. Do you guys want to play with me? No. no. Why not? Look at your ugly clothes. Why you say that? Because. Because what? Because I have new clothes and I don't want to get dirty with you. Why are you guys bullying me for? I know that once I'm in my classroom with my students, what I do with them and how I teach them um, is going to have to be something that's going to help them be successful in this world and navigate through it. I feel like big responsibility to make sure that all my students are successful. When it comes to standardized test scores, they are. His students' scores exceed state expectations, making him one of the most effective teachers at his school. Jose has another identity besides being a teacher. Jose brings into the classroom uh, this sort of renaissance man mentality. He is a, a, a living, breathing, walking um, example of them, of what they could be. The main reason why I ever started painting was because it felt good and it was fun and it was therapeutic for me like to just to be able to 
let my mind go, you know, and, and think about whatever I wanted to think about while I was painting and not have to worry about it. And kind of go full circle with my thoughts while I was painting and solve issues that were kind of bugging me in my mind. His work is reflected on hospitals and churches. His paintings hang in homes and nonprofits, and his illustrations beam from children's books. What's your solution gonna be? I love art and art is like, like my favorite thing. Like many of his students, Ramirez is the son of immigrant parents. Um, my kids teach me a lot about like life and like the, the struggles that they have to go through are struggles that I couldn't even begin to understand how to how to tackle and like the vision that that they show me the the resilience and the positiveness that they show me is always inspiring me and and making me push myself further this is a self portrait called del maestro in the classroom teaching about the universe this is la maestra and she's doing the same thing but she's playing with letters and creating words well, I just kind of play, paint what's close to me, you know, and like as I started to study a lot, a lot about artists and, and reading about them and, and the ones that were really, like really influenced my style and I learned from, I kind of like um, would always read how they would always paint what was close to them, what was in their hearts. So, you know, living in Los Angeles, being a school teacher, having three kids, you know, it's just my life. So I paint about it and get inspired by it. He was born in East L.A. in the late 60s. It was the scene of the Chicano moratorium and a time that gave birth to Chicano art. For me, I was definitely inspired by the generations of artists, Chicano artists that came out before me, like from the muralist of East Los that I grew up seeing, seeing their murals and kind of like having them enter me subconsciously. This was called Walkout, and I did it a few years ago, and it's kind of like there was a lot of walkouts happening with some of the high school students at that point, and in in it's kind of the same thing that had happened in the late 60s when a lot of Latino students were walking out of the high schools in, in East L.A. and demanding bilingual education and Chicano studies and, and more of an equitable education. There's always going to be that strand of art that's, that is going to be by and for the people, and, and I think that that's where my style of Chicano art kind of falls into. Although his art draws from his community now, he spent 10 years away. He got a scholarship to go to boarding school and then went on to UC Berkeley for his bachelor's and master's in fine arts. I think it's important to, to, uh, for me as an artist to feel like I'm a historian because I have a responsibility and, and like being educated and being exposed to a lot of stuff puts me in that category where I do have to step forward and take responsibility. He returned in 1993, and the city was again the backdrop to a wave of Chicano protests, this time against Prop 187, the initiative that would have barred undocumented immigrant children from attending public school. Well, it was a lot of the same kind of issues, except they were the Vietnam War, the civil rights movement, the education stuff that was like, it, it, there's all the inequality within LA Unified, so the fact that there was no space for Chicanos, they had to go out and make their own space. Like the Chicano artist before him, Ramirez started painting murals around the city. This is a mural that I painted outside of Dolores Mission Church in their parking lot. I painted it in 1999, um, the year Luna was born, my second daughter. And um, I painted it because I had a child that was born, but I also know that a lot of babies and parents and fathers come through here a lot, um, whether for a baptism or a First Holy Communion or marriage or just to come for on a weekly basis to this church. And so I wanted it to be here to remind us as fathers of our responsibilities and how beautiful it is to be a father. Son. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Look it. Who's that? You. And? You. And me. And me and who else? Who else could it be? It could be Luna when she was little, huh? You, as an artist trying to do my part of providing a, an alternative history or an alternative vision to a history that, that has often been shown as being negative or to show that we're, we're not invisible. And by painting, to instead show the next generation what's possible. With the person sitting next to you, or with the group of three or four people, I want you to think of one of, one of the problems, and you're going to 
solve it with your puppet. I would hope that they would feel like a sense of empowerment, a sense of responsibility for their community, a sense of empowerment that they have they have a say over their life and, and where their life goes and stuff. And so sometimes as a kid, you, you, you don't feel that. And maybe through art you can because you're creating your own narrative. Creating can kind of help you develop that narrative for, for taking responsibility and showing people that, that we're all in this together. What should the first rule be?